Good afternoon, everyone, um, and welcome to this Legs Matter Lounge session. Um, today, my name's Abby, and I'm from LNR. Um, and today, I'm joined by my colleague Fiona, um, who's a clinical advisor at LNR, and also Sarah Gardner, part of the Legs Matter Coalition. Um, we're going to play you a, a video, um, which Fiona and I have recorded, um, with the aim really to, to sort of get people thinking about choosing the right self care compression garment. Um, hopefully we'll be sharing with you some of our sort of handy hints and tips, particularly, particularly around um, application. Um, and also we'll be sharing some of the tools um, and support that there is available um, to aid your decision making. We really want this to be a relaxed session, so please, um, throughout the video, if you've got any questions, pop them in the chat function um, and or, or the Q&A function. And uh, Sarah, Fiona and I will do our best to answer them all in a discussion at the end of the video. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this Legs Matter Lounge session, which we at Eleanor are delighted to support and contribute towards Let's Get Loud About Legs and Feet. My name is Abby Rustin, and I'm a brand manager at LNR. And today I'll be joined by the fabulous Fiona Fox, who's one of our regional clinical advisors. In this session, we will cover what things we need to consider when choosing the right compression garments. We'll also look at some um, handy hints and tips and some application videos around supporting you when applying ready wrap and our hosiery. We're also going to give you some of our hints and tips that we discuss with patients and clinicians on a regular basis. And later on in the presentation, we'll also be referring to you to further support resources and some of the campaigns that we've got that can really support you and help you get involved. First of all, we're going to look at some of the factors that increase the risk of venous disease. There are many factors that will increase the risk, some of which can be prevented or improved, such as lifestyle choices, things like diet, uh, mobility and also smoking. Clinicians can support patients with directing to appropriate resources. And later in this, this session, we will also discuss some of the resources that we have available that can support both clinicians and patients with improving lifestyle. One of the things that's really important is early intervention. This is absolutely key and is the res responsibility of both the patient and the clinician. Patients need to make the clinicians aware of anything that is going on with their legs, any changes that may happen, and also present to them as early as possible. Clinicians can then act quickly, um, which will improve the risk of venous disease progression. So good afternoon, I'm Fiona Fox, as Abby's already informed you, I'm a clinical advisor with LNR. As with all compression, self-care compression garments aid venous return. We know that this is vital in order to prevent further deterioration and disease progression, but also to aid venous leg ulceration healing and to overall maintain healthy legs. We're starting to see more and more people embrace the concept of self-care, which means that people can get more involved in their treatment, hopefully increasing their understanding of their lower limb condition. But for some people, it may just be something as simple as being able to remove their garment, to wash their leg, or take a shower, something perhaps that we take for granted. If suitable for a self-care compression garment, the patient has a variety of options to choose from. Hosiery is used ideally for preventing disease progression and maintaining healing. And it is available in two different types. One, when edema is present, and two, when there is no edema. And this will be looked at at the assessment. Hosiery kits, as the name suggests, are a two layer system, which provide a full therapeutic level of compression and should be used to heal a venous leg ulcer. These also allow patients to maintain their independence. Ready wrap system can be used at the healing or maintenance phase and again provides full therapeutic compression. This system is ideal for patients where there is edema present as the system can be adjusted as the edema reduces. It's also been proven to be really helpful for patients with poor dexterity, as they often can manage the individual straps easier than applying the compression garments, uh, such as hosiery. 
both of these systems allow patients to maintain their independence. So how do we choose the right self-care compression garment? We always need to carry out a full holistic assessment to ensure and determine that the patient is suitable for compression. Then using the cross checker, which is a simple tool to guide the clinician to select the most appropriate compression garment. More details of this will be available at the end of the session. Once we have selected the most appropriate type of compression, we need to discuss with our patient the colour and the style in order that they get something as they're going to wear this every day that they feel comfortable and confident to wear. We will now watch a short video that shows the correct application of hosiery with some pro pra pragmatic hints and tips for clinicians and patients. This video stars our much loved self-care ambassador, Mary, who sadly passed away in April this year, aged 101. Mary was a true inspiration and passionate that her age was not a barrier to self-care. How to wear compression hosiery. Applying compression hosiery isn't complicated but it is important to get it right. In this video, we'll walk you through two different methods of application and show you how compression hosiery is suitable for all ages. The first example is a demonstration without a hosiery aid. In the second part of the video, an ActiGlide is used to aid application. Example one, applying compression hosiery. Step one, prepare the hosiery. To make the hosiery easier to put on, First, we turn it inside out. We do this in three simple steps. Reach, pinch, and fold. Simply slip your hand down inside the hosiery as far as the heel. Gently grasp the heel, and while still holding the heel, pull the top of the hosiery down to turn it inside out. This will leave the toe area tucked in. Step two, apply the hosiery. Place the hosiery onto your foot, then place your hands on either side of the hosiery. Gather towards the toes, then gently pull it over the foot, then gradually pull it up your leg. Step three, adjust for comfort. Smooth out any wrinkles on the leg. Pull the toe section forward, smooth the ankle and instep areas, and make sure your toes are not restricted. Step four, repeat for the other leg. The same approach can be taken when applying Activa or ActiLymph hosiery kits. Example two. Applying compression hosiery with ActiGlide. Step one, prepare the ActiGlide. The ActiGlide is designed to make it even easier to apply your own compression hosiery. To prepare the ActiGlide, first we fold it in half and thread the soft, flexible pin through the holes from the widest end before securing the pin in the pocket at the end. The ActiGlide is now ready to use. Step two, apply the ActiGlide. Slide the ActiGlide over your toes so that the pin is under the sole of your foot. If applying closed toe hosiery, some people prefer to keep the pin on top. The ActiGlide should cover your foot, but don't try to pull it too far. Step three, apply your hosiery. Now you can put your hosiery on without folding it in the same way you would pull on a boot. Place the heel in position and spread the hosiery evenly over your foot. Step four, adjust the ActiGlide. Now you're ready to move the hosiery up the leg, so you will need to adjust the ActiGlide. Pull the pin out of the back and take hold of the black handle at the front. Pull the ActiGlide up the leg. Step five, adjust your hosiery. Follow the ActiGlide up the leg in stages, easing the hosiery over it each time. Step six, adjust for comfort. Pull the ActiGlide out of the hosiery smooth out any wrinkles on the leg. Step seven, repeat for the other leg. If you have any queries or if your hosiery doesn't feel quite right, you should contact your nurse or healthcare professional as soon as possible. Follow these steps and you'll be able to apply your compression hosiery confidently, comfortably and quickly, which is important because when it comes to taking care of your legs, every moment matters. We will now watch another video showing Eleanor's compression wrap system ready wrap to show you the different options that are available and also the things to consider when applying the system. In this video, we'll walk you through how to apply ready wrap to the lower limb. 
Each garment can be worn in combination with others for full or half leg coverage and can be secured quickly and firmly using the color coded Velcro fasteners. Ready Wrap is supplied with a liner which aids comfort and offers protection. If you choose not to use the liner, ActiFast is an ideal alternative. Applying Ready Wrap Foot. When applying Ready Wrap Foot, place the foot in the wrap with the white Velcro fasteners closest to the toes and the light blue fasteners at the ankle. Make sure the heel is placed firmly in the heel hole and the tag on the outside is placed above the heel. The bottom strap without the fastener should be taken across the foot and secured over the top with the white Velcro. Then place the top strap with no fastener around the ankle and secure over the top with the light blue Velcro. Applying Ready Wrap Calf. For Ready Wrap Calf application, align the garment with the back of the leg and place two to three centimeters above the ankle. First, place the strap with no fasteners across the ankle, then secure with the white fastener. Next, fasten the strap with a horizontal light blue fastener at full stretch, 50% overlap, locking out at the front of the limb and repeat using the strap with the light blue vertical fastener. Continue fastening the straps in order using the same process until all straps are in place. Simply begin each strap by fastening the horizontal Velcro followed by the vertical fastener. Remember to lock out each strap from the front of the limb. Applying Ready Wrap Thigh. When applying Ready Wrap Thigh, you can use the two thin straps at the top of the garment for additional hold before securing the other straps if needed. Align the thigh unit with the white Velcro strap five centimeters above the top of the knee. Then, from the knee, fasten the horizontal Velcro, then secure the strap with the vertical fastener. Continue applying in the order. Horizontal fastener first, then vertical fastener. Match the color code, white, then light blue, then dark blue, and repeat. Apply each strap with a 50% overlap. Remember to lock out each strap from the front of the limb. Release and realign the two thin straps. For straight shaped limbs, fasten the top thin strap straight across. For more V shaped limbs, fasten the top thin straps in a V or cross design. Applying Ready Wrap Knee. Apply Ready Wrap Knee with your leg bent slightly at the knee. Align from the back of the knee with the white Velcro strap in line with the center of the kneecap. Place the middle strap without the Velcro directly over the knee. Then fasten the white Velcro strap over the top with the strap at full stretch, ensuring knee mobility. Next, place the bottom strap with the horizontal light blue fastener, then secure the vertical piece of light blue Velcro. Finally, Fasten the top strap with the horizontal dark blue Velcro, then secure the vertical piece of dark blue fastener. When wearing a full limb garment set, the knee piece should be the last to be applied. Follow these steps and you'll be able to apply Ready Wrap confidently and quickly. Ready Wrap. Every moment matters. So, in relation to hints and tips, I probably could be here for the next hour talking to you about some of these. Ensuring clinicians and patients are fully aware of correct application is really important. And there are resources available in terms of hosiery applicator devices or simply using a pair of rubber gloves that make application easier. It's also vital that the garments are looked after, that they are washed and dried correctly, and they are actually replaced correctly and patients are encouraged to dispose of their old garments and to wear their new ones, as this can greatly impact garment performance. Encouraging patients to take care of their leg health is just as important as the compression garments they're wearing. This may include leg exercises, lifestyle changes such as weight loss, or a daily skin care routine. I'll now hand you back to Abby, who's going to talk you through um, some further support for both clinicians and patients.
At LNR, we have lots and lots of resources to support both clinicians and patients in their decision making. One of the things we're really excited about is our LNR Club Squeeze In, which you can access today and receive lots of free resources, either online or also um, to be delivered to you in the post to support your decision making with patients um, on what is the most appropriate compression. Alongside Squeeze In, we also have lots of tools to help you, such as the Quest Checker, which Fiona discussed earlier. Uh, we have measuring forms and also pathways which aid decision making. There's also a compression selector app, which allows you to have instant access to some decision making right at your fingertips. You can speak to anyone in the LNR team who will be able to direct you to these resources. But also there's a link on the screen now which um, takes you directly to a page on our website which you can download all of these tools for free. At the end of this presentation, I'll also put up the link for the squeezing campaign so you can sign up today. In terms of support for patients, LNR Club Squeeze In is perfect in terms of tailoring it to the patient's needs. As you can see, Johnny Vegas is our ambassador for this, and he's got a real personal connection to someone in his family who has suffered with their leg health and also leg ulcers. He's provided lots of educational videos and also some humorous videos to help support um, patients that are suffering with venous leg ulcers. Alongside that, on, by signing up to Squeeze In, you receive a free healthy living booklet which can support you on your leg health journey. There's also lots of different videos that can help you around your application of your compression garments. There's also advice and information on some of the common queries that patients may have when dealing with their leg health or also their compression garments and lots and lots of product support. So please sign up today and visit squeezein.life. Squeezein provides motivation, knowledge and guidance to help you make the small changes to improve your leg health. Thank you everybody for um, joining, for watching us on the, that video. Um, and thank you everybody that's already submitted um, some questions. Fiona, Sarah and I will do our best to get through them all. And if you do have additional questions, please do pop them in the chat function or the Q&A. Um, all of the questions so far that have come through are to do with ReadyWrap. So um, you know, I'll, I'll start by answering one of them that I can, and then I'll hand one of the questions over to Fiona. Um, she may be best placed to answer that. So. Um, one of the questions that's come through um, is from Jane, which is, is the ready wrap suitable for um, managing lymphedema? Can it be supplied, made to measure? And if so, is it available on prescription? Um, so first of all, to answer the question around managing lymphedema, yes, it's suitable for managing patients with lymphedema. It is a short, short stretch system. Um, so it has the ideal properties to really help shift um, ed edema um, and it, it works in a very similar way to the Aptico bandage in terms of how it delivers the compression levels in a, in a kind of high working pressure, pressure and low rest, resting pressure. Unfortunately, we don't currently have it available um, as a made to measure garment, but there is lots of sizes. And um, so the measuring form will be able to support you in terms of um, how to pick the most appropriate size. And there is also extender straps in the range as well. So if you do need um, support for any patients that may be sitting between sizes, there is options available to you. And just for that final bit of the question, yes, it is available um, on prescription. Um, one of the um, questions, that, well, two questions that have come in, um, I think are very much very similar, which is how do you know you're applying the right amount of compression uh, with ready wrap? Um, and how much compression does ReadyWrap give? Um, Fiona, am I okay to hand that question over to you? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I think we've already touched on it actually, that um, obviously because ReadyWrap is a short stretch system, it provides sort of variable pressures. So it delivers a higher working pressure and a, a lower resting pressure. Obviously these pressures sort of are, are changing all the time. So you will always, when the patient is active, get a pressure uh, of above 40 millimetres of mercury. Um, but that pressure will obviously reduce a little bit similar to Actico, as you've mentioned, uh, when the patient's leg is elevated. Um, so I think that sort of answers those, both of those questions, really. Yeah, um, just, the other just question, to add, I'm sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the other question um, somebody asked was about um, using the ankle ready wrap. 
um, because she gets achy ankles after a long shift. Um, we wouldn't generally recommend using the, um, the foot unit, um, which obviously covers the ankle um, on its own. It's generally used in conjunction with the, um, the calf unit, particularly, or if it's, if it's for full leg um, management, then obviously the knee and the thigh. Um, it wouldn't have any direct impact on the ankle bone or the ankle joints, but this might be a symptom that this, this lady's developing sort of, you know, achy, heavy legs that we often hear about when people are showing dis and displaying signs and symptoms of early venous disease. So actually going and wearing some um, hosiery could actually help, you know, improve that symptom that she's, uh, that she's finding she's getting. That she's getting. I, I would yeah. support that, Fiona. I think that would be the first line to try. Um, obviously, you need to rule out any other things that's going on with your ankle joints, but it does sound like sort of achy legs at the end of a shift. And uh, I think uh, we, we spoke uh, on, a, on an earlier session about the need to look after our own legs as well as mm -hmm. our patients. For those of you that might be clinicians out there watching this. So um, you, wearing hosiery, I think, is a really good way of, of stopping our legs feeling achy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully we've managed to um, answer those very specific questions um, about ready wrap. I sort of noted some of the discussion points down that we could um, discuss um, sort of for, for the rest of the session. And I think, you know, one of the, the things that I, I've sort of noted out as a theme really within that video, and I know it's um, a theme in a lot of the, the sessions and the, the lounge sessions this week is around patient engagement and making sure that there's a mutual understanding between um, the clinician and the patient. And I just wondered from your point of view, Sarah and Fiona, as both clinicians, um, how, in, how important that is. Um, yeah, I okay. Yeah, I think um, obviously, you know, it, it's, it's vitally important that there's that engagement from patients. I think, you know, they've got to have that understanding of why compression um, is required. Um, you know, many other diseases, patients will understand the need for a particular medication or a particular regime. And it's exactly the same um, when we're dealing with, you know, healthy legs. Mm -hmm. um, so patients that are sort of display, displaying signs and symptoms of venous disease, you know, to catch those symptoms, it, it, I think, you know, that, that's sort of what we hope anyway. Yeah, I, I, would, I would fully support that. And um, I, th I think it's, it's, it's getting to the bottom of trying to, yes, understand your disease, isn't it? Because I think historically people who've had leg ulceration, it's never been seen as a disease. Um, it is it is a disease. It's a it's a it's a problem with your veins predominantly. There was an article recently that I've seen around bounced around. I think it's come from the um, diabetic foot or the foot or the or podiatry anyway around. We, we should be talking about healed ulcers as being in remission rather than mm. being healed, because mm. that that will, I suppose, help sort of reinforce the, the fact that, you know, you still have an underlying condition that needs to be managed. However, we're managing it with hosiery, for example, rather than, you know, your active bandaging that you might have had. Um, I think it's really important we give people choice. Um, you know, we it's not necessarily one size fits all. With, with our patients, we're all individual. You know, and I saw that amazing lady who said she was a hundred and something applying her hosiery and she did it really well. But some people will struggle. And I think it's looking at other maybe devices that people can use if it does one doesn't work for them. The same is with with garments, isn't it? And, and I think we have to be offering those options and flexibility if we're going to get total compliance or concordance or buy in. Mm -hmm. With, with using this sort of um, this particular sort of modality really yeah. but we, we do we do need that two-way engagement between clinicians and and the people that we're sort of caring for as well definitely we have responsibility to educate don't we yes definitely and you know i suppose obviously you know um, with the situation that we're all experienced living in at the moment you know these sort of options um, available to patients is even more critical than it's ever been 
ab absolutely. And we have to look at other ways of, of providing those options or that information to, to, so they mm. can make informed decisions. And I think platforms like this are fantastic. Uh, the mm. whole Legs Matter platform is fantastic because you can sort of dip in and out and until you fully understand, you know, uh, about the condition or the options available to you. I think there's some frustrations as well. I uh, we had a caller on a, on a different session saying that, you know, they are trying to contact, say, lymphedema services and haven't got a response and they need to have their hosiery renewed. So we need to make sure that we have systems in place to ensure that mm -hmm. patients can get timely feedback um, and advice. Otherwise, they're left wondering and worrying um, ab about their care, really, or, or their, their condition. So it is important that we make sure that we've got good communication systems in place at a time like this, I think. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, and I think as well is making sure that, like you've, you've said, um, Sarah, really like that um, analogy of, you know, patients when they, they've got healed also, they're in remission, because it's really important um, in this time more than ever that those patients are still receiving their, their new prescriptions of hosiery to make sure that that compression is still being delivered. Um, because you know what what we don't want to end up with is is more wounds or more legs that are broken down you know whenever the end of this is going to be that's ultimately going to put a lot more pressure on the system and, and on patients themselves absolutely yeah i think it's the language we use the terminology we use you know we we have to be in, we're all in this together um, and, and I love the idea that you mentioned earlier around the additional things that are needed to keep legs healthy. It isn't just about compression garments. It is so important that we look at that holistic sort mm -hmm. of, um, you know, approach to everything that people need to be doing to maintain health. Um, but yeah, I, I just think, you know, we, we, this is giving us an opportunity, this unfortunate situation, to really think about how we can do things better in terms of empowering and self-care. And But we have responsibility to make sure there's a strategy in place to do that properly, I think. And make sure patients feel supported as well yeah, at that absolutely. time. And that, you know, self-care doesn't mean that they're not going to receive the, the support that they need to be able to do that. No, it's more shared care, isn't it? You know, just we're always there but we need to make sure that, that that is clear about how people can access us and they'll get a timely response yeah absolutely okay i don't think there's any more questions that have come in so i don't know if there's any additional points to or or sarah that you want to make no i've got nothing um, else that's been a good session <laughs> No, I think, you know, it's been a, it's been a great session. I think, you know, there's um, there's a lot that we can do, um, you know, that, that, that we can do to educate ourselves, to educate our families, our friends, you know, even even myself, just not being as active as I usually am, you know, putting my hose on every morning actually does help make a difference. Mm, yeah. uh, when we first sort of started um, working from home, I was forgetting to do that and finding that my legs are really quite heavy and achy towards the end of the day. So actually just simply putting my hosiery on every morning like I would a pair of socks is making all the difference. And it can be something as, sim as simple as that. But also, you know, just taking regular little breaks, you know, little walks about looking after my own health obviously is going to help improve, you know, leg health generally. And I think that's something that everybody can do. It's quite simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. A little bit of prevention sort of early fee is, is going to sort of definitely. pay for the other one, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, no more questions have come in. So um, thank you very much, everybody that has, has joined this session. We really hope that it has been um, useful and valuable to you. Um, I know I've definitely enjoyed it. Um, I'm sure Fee and Sarah have as well. So um, thank you very much for joining and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.